Hello and welcome to Dragon's Breath, the Da Vinci show where we eat progressively hotter wings and I try to get the truth out of a teacher. Uh, today I am joined by Mr. Gaji. How are you doing today? A little scared, but happy to be here. Let me tell you, a little good. nervous on a number of levels. Good, let's... good, good. That's that's <laughs> good. Uh, anyway, so let me explain what's going to happen a little bit. We have 10 sauces here. I have a bunch of questions that you guys have brought in. Um, everything from something super simple to hopefully something that's going to make him sweat just a bit. And we'll just talk and eat some wings and we'll have a good time. Sounds fantastic. All right, cool. Our first sauce is the classic. So um, I'll just let you sauce the wing however you want. Uh, this one's chili maple classic hot sauce, kind of sweet. Love Here we it. go. All right. Ooh. It's a little thin, but it comes out. We'll just uh, do this. And... Do I eat and then you ask? How's it going? Uh, let's let's eat and then I'll ask. Sounds good. All right. So, cheers. I like the sauce. Mm. We're good. Mm. All right. So, we got another number of questions, and I wasn't really sure where to throw them. So the first and most important question that we have on this entire thing, mm. from Garrett Taylor. Oh. He wants to know if you are, of course, affiliated with the New York Mafia. Well, that's gonna be a no. Although, there's always some stories about my family's history. Oh yeah? Yeah, so my, my grandfather's side, they owned a, a winery. Actually, you can look it up, Gaji Brothers Wine. It's actually Gaji Brothers Champagne. Oh really? Yeah, and um, actually back during the um, during Prohibition, they had to go back and forth because they had their winery, and because of Prohibition, then they had to go back to Italy. Mm -hmm. But back to the Mafia. Eventually, the place burned down, which I always thought... The winery burned down? The winery burned down. How does the winery um, burn down? I don't know any of the details, <laughs> other than the fact that some people have suggested, I don't know if great-grandpa really maybe got involved. However, maybe I... Maybe I've spoken too much since this is... Uh oh Nobody tell anybody anything, because I don't right. think I was supposed to talk about that. No, so but, not... <laughs> but no, I don't think. And I, I, didn't know that, I didn't know that your your family was in the winery business. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my grandfather was a... Actually, my grandfather later on was a... He was a blender for old granddad, which is a liquor. He worked for natural national distillers for a long time. Oh, yeah? Blending whiskey for a living. That's so interesting. You know, maybe yeah. this is related to this, All but right. somebody else, they want to remain anonymous, wants to know how the heck you walk so fast down the halls. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I always, I I think it's a, I'm not a city person. I'm from New York, so I'm not from, the, but I'm not from the city. I what part of New York are you from? So it's, I grew up just outside of Syracuse, New York, which is right in the middle of the state. It's about six hours yep. from New York City, but I actually grew up in a small town called Chittenango. Chitinango. 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 Yeah. It's an Iroquois word for where water runs north. And it's just oh. a small little, basically a farm town, little village, um, 10 miles east of Syracuse. So I'm not exactly a city person, although I went to high school in Syracuse. So yeah. um, why I walk so fast, I don't know. I just always have. Just got things to do. I hadn't really noticed. You're I, didn't realize, hurry. I didn't realize it was that noticeable, but... Um, Apparently, <laughs> someone needed to know, <laughs> and they wanted you not to know who it was. Oh, Apparently, they're, I don't know, maybe they're trying to catch up to you. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. Right. Ready for wing two? I am. Let's All go. Right. So this one is Shaquanda's Banji Ranch Sauce. Here we go. Shaquanda's. Shaquanda's. This ranch inspired hot sauce gives it dreamy, creamy textures of tahini, chives, and a pinch of dill of herbaceousness. Herbaceousness? Herbaceousness. Is that a word? Yeah, it means her <laughs> herby. <laughs> I want this one on this way. All right. There we go. I just ranched myself. Looks very professional to do on camera. Yeah, I know. I probably shouldn't have worn a white shirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was pretty good. I enjoy that one. Mm, good. I'm not a real big ranch my fan myself. No, either am I. But you make it spicy. Not too bad. It's possible. Okay. Who we got? Miss Campbell, for our next question, wants oh. to know, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? If I could live anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. Anywhere. You can go anywhere. You got to live there, though. 
Boy, that's a tough one. Um, so part of me would be maybe New York City. Like will, greater New York City or like on the outskirts? Of no, it? right in New York City. There's always a part of me that was like, uh, wished I live in, in a big, big, big city. Mm-hmm. Um, now, whether I would like to as an almost 50-year-old, <laughs> I'm not as sure. Um, I've never, I also, um, I'm not a really a big traveler at all. Um, so there's an embarrassingly few places that I've been around the world. But I've always been intrigued by London. I always thought London would be a I've cool place. Been to, I've always, I've always wanted to go to London, but I've never been there. It sounds both like horrible and gross, yeah. but it's London, <laughs> and so the history. I mean, the history. There, there are buildings older. There are pubs older than the United States itself in I know, London, it and that just blows my mind. You know, the history. I'd love to. I'm a big soccer fan too. I'd love to go just there and watch a bunch of Premier League, but that'd be more of a a visit but to live there i think would be very cool the history and then the proximity to the rest of of europe and other places i think would be pretty neat cool but yeah i don't have a no burning desire to live in we're good places. here in ogden right across oh i the love street. ogden i i, I, I love, you know is is i remember so you you grew up in new york but ogden was i always kind of called it the the, the armpit of utah um <laughs> but uh, you know, over the last 15 years or so, it's become this really cool place where we took a lot of, like, I mean, we're in Da Vinci right now. We're in an old right. building that used to be a Canfield area. And I always say, I felt like this building used to be the, like, where the the serial killers hid the bodies. Yeah. And, <laughs> that's what the third floor looked like. And that's what the third floor looked like when we first got here. And we turned it into a school. And Ogden's, that's, that is such a cool thing about Ogden. No, it's funny because when I first moved here, I was actually surprised that people would refer refer to Ogden that way. Yeah. I used to joke when, when I'd go back east because Utica, New York, and anybody says anything about Utica, New York, mm-hmm. that's how people thought of Ogden. It's oh, like yeah? just this nasty place. But I, I was like, Ogden, I was like, what's, I look out my front door, I got the mountains there, I've got this nice little city right here, I got the river over there, and I'm like, oh. And then I would tell my friends, dad, trust me, it's a terrible place, get out of here. Let's keep it, let's keep the populations from coming. All right. <laughs> you wanna go go on? Yeah, let's right. move on. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Cadejo, I think is how you pronounce this one. Uh, here we go. Um, made by Amelia and Greg. So it's a small batch with the supernatural spirit myth Dog of myth, it has the bite to match thanks to habaneros, garlic, and black pepper. That's quite the description. Habaneros. I love a habanero. I think they are super tasty. I think a great job would be to be the describer. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like, yeah, pepper hot sauces have that, this thing, you know, there's an art to it. it, There's a mythical quality to it. All right. right, Let's see what the art is. That's good. Mm. Like it. Not a lot. All right. So you're a teacher. Yeah, she's such a. You're a teacher at this point, and uh, I don't think a lot of us who ended up in teaching did not mean to end up in teaching, <laughs> and we're looking for any reason to get out of school. When we were a kid, I dropped out of preschool. My mom was a preschool teacher, and I would run away and hide in the house. Oh, you were one of those kids. I was that All kid. Right. I, I dropped out of preschool <laughs> and ended up with a master's degree. So. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell, again, wants to know, what did you think of, what kind of student were you when you were a kid? Oh, I've loved school. I I was always the good student, I think. Um, elementary school. I mean, there's this one. It was it was funny. My wife and I, because my parents, I don't know if your parents, your parents like save your old report cards and stuff? Um, I'm sure there's a drawer out there that's got all sorts of embarrassing pictures and report cards yeah. in it, but I don't know where it is. But the reason I thought of it is I had my, my first grade teacher wrote in it, but they have like one comment for the quarter and it was like, Paul does his best not to talk in class. And I was like, mom, I was like, I talked a lot in class because I honestly couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh yeah, you talked all the time in class, but then your, your brother was born and you never said another word. <laughs> so there's something about my little brother being born and I became a much quieter person. But no, for me, um, I'm trying to think, yeah, I mean, I was never like, like the, in junior high and high school, I wasn't like the valedictorian type or even mm-hmm. the top 5%, but I was always just like a good, solid boring student i think you played the lacrosse didn't you yeah so I was, sports was my thing 
most growing up. Um, so in high school, I played soccer and lacrosse. I, was, I played basketball for a while. Um, so a lot of my, especially like yeah, I played high, basketball high with you. Was uh, you're oh, hard to guard. Of fun. <laughs> you can so, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I my dad taught me how to shoot. Um, but yeah, for me, a high school and junior high. And even, I guess you can go back to elementary school. I thought about, I mean, sports in school. Like, that's pretty much what I thought about. I just love sports. Reading a newspaper as a kid, read the sports center, or the sports center, the sports page as a kid. And it, it was our version of sports center. Yeah, exactly. They don't it was even on sports, paper, dead trees. And they don't even know what sports center is anymore. But that's okay. Oh, <laughs> gosh. It's on ESPN. It's a television network. <laughs> What's television? What? Uh, it's like Netflix, but you have to wait. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, next one. All this right. one's probably my favorite. Los oh, okay. Cantes, uh, chili verde sauce. Here you go. Um... Serrano and Habanero Lace Verde version of Las Cantes. It's this one's my favorite. I look What's forward favorite? to this one. All right. I'm gonna get nice. I should have cut these chickens into smaller bits, man. I think we're doing just fine. Thank you. I'm gonna be full. Mm. I was actually really hungry today too. So this hits the spot. Mm. Mm. I I could put that sauce on anything mm. all day long. All right. All right. So you would have you have no idea how many food questions we got. Oh, it is an absurd question. amount of food questions. Food questions. So I've right. tried to I've tried to put them down here. <laughs> Just various food questions. They're asked by lots of people. All right. So um, you you're from New York. You live in Utah. Utah is not known for its uh, cuisine. If you could right. bring any food from New York, oh. and you want people from New York to or Utah to know about, what food do we need to know about from New York? Well, you know about the food, but you just don't know what it's like in its true, real, ideal form, and that's pizza. Oh, yeah. New York-style pizza. Lucky Slice is the probably the closest approximate to it, but there's something about how they do the dough, just everything about it. I, th I would say even Italian food in general. Um, I The bread, <laughs> everything. That's probably the biggest thing that I miss about being in New York is just kind of the local mom and pop Italian restaurant. Um, you know, whether it's the, the sliced Italian bread just waiting for you at the table, which you never ever get here. It's always mm -hmm. breadsticks and just a perfectly perfect bread yeah, and the pizza. And I've actually gone on an embarrassingly long time in classes talking about how to do a pizza. Oh, I get that. So, like I grew up on a fruit farm. I can go on, a, on pizzas <laughs> for an absorbent amount of time. But it's the, yeah, the big thick slice. It's just got the right consistency. You've got to be able to, you get that slice. And when you fold it, mm -hmm. the tip. Got to have the fold. The fold, but the, if the tip goes down, not good. It's got to be dense enough to the tip, tip stays up. All right, so, so there's. Fold. And that's. My there mind. is a rivalry between a bunch of pizza places in New York City. And I'm trying to remember the names of them. Oh, I probably wouldn't remember okay. those. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what your opinion is on any of those. So favorite food. Yeah. It would actually probably be pizza. All right. A uh, grossest thing you've ever eaten. Grossest thing I've ever eaten. Willingly. Oh. Um. Oh, that's a really good question. I'm kind of blanking out on that one. I bet I, I, there was a, a liver dish once that my grandmother tried to give me, or I can't remember who it was, and I can't remember exactly what it was. I remember really not liking that. And it was funny, I was talking to teachers the other day. I'm trying to like kale. I would love to like kale, but it makes me sick. Kale's disgusting. It it tastes like weeds covered and, in soap. And I don't understand why it's creeping up. And every time I look at something or I have a recipe, they're asking for kale. Because I just don't Because it's it. full of... It's full it's, of nutrients. If, it's, it, it, but, it, if it tastes that bad, it's got to be good for you. Or it's poison. <laughs> That's usually Either way. Either way. <laughs> All right. Um, if you could eliminate one food from the world, then what would it be? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably kale. kale. That'd I would have eliminated right. cauliflower. Cauliflower. And Miss Goodman wants to know what's the best Southern food, which is a great question to ask somebody from New York. Southern food? Well, my, my grandmother grew up in Mississippi. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I, I would say all the food. I love Southern food. I mean, I, I've been to... One time I went to... It was actually my, my family down there brought me to this place. It was a... It was just cat... I think it was catfish, and it was a fried catfish, and it was the most awesome thing i've ever had in my life i think all right let's move on we've Where's got uh brooklyn deli's ghost pepper Ooh. hot sauce this one's kind of uh 
Indian food meets hot sauce. It's got ghost peppers in it. Uh -oh. Uh, masala sauce. Ooh, I do enjoy something it. called a Gunter pepper, which I had never heard of until I put this sauce on a thing. Interesting. But it's got a nice smell, I think. I do really like Indian food. And in fact, I never really enjoyed Indian food until I moved to Utah. Well, we have so, some excellent Indian food restaurants. Yeah, we absolutely do. Um, Gus. Mm hmm. And Hard of. Mm hmm. Mm. All right. All right. It's yep. starting to kick in a little They're bit. It's kicking in a little bit. Yeah. These ones, these ones are nice. Just want to creep up on you a little bit. Yeah, I'm feeling this one. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit in the back of the mouth. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now we're filling a little bit. If you weren't a teacher, what would you do? This is Nicholas Robbins who asked this question. If I weren't a teacher, what would I do? <laughs> There's... Part of me that would have, um, I worked in politics for a little while, so I might be in politics. Not as a politician, but working for them. So I worked for the New York State Legislature for a while. Oh, yeah? Right around, uh, yeah, early. What'd you do for them? I, um, when I was in grad school, I got an in, basically a paid internship where I was in their press office doing like, I'd write like speeches, but like simple speeches. I wasn't like the big speech mm -hmm. writer. Um, press releases, you know, it was, you know, basically kind of the stuff where you, You'd prep your the the person I worked for for let them know all the news of the day and just kind of field um, calls from reporters and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed that. And there was a brief moment in time where I made I had to make a choice whether I wanted to stay doing that kind of work mm -hmm. um, or continue the path to teaching. And I I got out of that. That's a in terms of like a long career. Um, that's probably not something. That at the time I wanted to do, but I think, yeah, I mean, that's something to work in politics in some capacity would be probably something. And then I got crazy things like I'm, I speak no foreign languages and I'm terrible at it, but anytime anybody's talking about linguistics or where words come from or etymology, I am oh, all over it. So I like, I feel like there's like another career where I'm doing that. If or, you're really bored, go read the Oxford unabridged dictionary and will tell you the history of every word in the English language and I know it sounds boring but it's fascinating yeah or, or find the right podcast um yeah so. yeah I guess you could do that I worked in a writing lab in high in college and at the Weber State and that's what we would do when no one was there all right let's move on all right let's go it's torch bearer uh oh. mushroom mayhem uh mushroom mayhem, mushroom mayhem. imagine mushroom. Imagine hot sauce meets like barbecue sauce meets like A1. Let's get that out of here. All right. Cool. Good blob there. Yeah. Mushroom. Mushroom. I'm intrigued mayhem. by that as a. Doesn't want to come out. Mushroom mayhem. All right. Mm -hmm. This one I like a lot. That's actually really that good. That is a rock and good sauce. Mm. That's really good. Get you right in the All back right. of the throat a yeah. little bit. Yeah, we're getting it. Mm -hmm. A little mm -hmm. delayed heat. But a little delayed good. heat. <laughs> you feel it right back there. We're good. Which is good. <clears throat> you start making, your eyes start rotting a little bit, get a little bit of the nose runs, but it's cool. So far, so good. All right, so you and me have talked about Star Trek a few times. Yes, yes. And uh, my love of, of Star Trek is vast and I'm vast. <laughs> and... So for me, I look at Star Trek and like John Picard is my 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 TV dad. Got it, got it. Um, if you could be, if you could be any character oh. in the Star Trek universe, <laughs> which one would you choose? I don't choose Picard. I think I choose Data. But, oh really? Um, Data. Huh? Data. Yeah. To have all the knowledge. No, to have all the curiosity. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Data is oh, eminently yeah. curious about everything and to be able to experience life <clears throat> uh, can kind of, from that almost infant point of view, but still capable of all that growth just fascinates me. No, and to be able to, that's really intriguing to be able to ask all those questions without any self-consciousness. Yes. Like he can ask anything he wants and everybody understands why he's asking it. He doesn't feel stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's intriguing. Because my first thing was, I was thinking Riker. <laughs> have you is watched it, the new season of Picard? Not the newest season. Ooh, no. Riker is excellent in it. Oh, is he? Yes. Okay. And then I'm trying to think. 
Um, trying to think some of the other ones because to not get the obvious characters. Um, trying to think of like Deep Space Nine, but nobody really intrigued. Deep me Space there. Nine is the best Star Trek. Yeah, without question. without question. Um, I yeah, think, no, I think I take you as an O'Brien person. <laughs> I just I, not because he suffers all the time. But no, the... I yeah, no, I would I. I wish I had that kind of skill because I have like no handy person skill and to be an engineer is like mm -hmm. beyond totally my skill set. That's probably why I didn't consider him. <laughs> but I think of the, the Riker, just kind of the... Charismatic. Everyone charismatic loves Riker. And super confident all the time and smart. and mm -hmm. But that's, yeah. Okay. I like your answer of data though better. Data. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, definitely a better answer. All right. This is the Angry Goat Dreams of Calypso. Dreams of Calypso. Made with pineapple, mango, and bell peppers. Um, but also with a seven pot primo mash. Seven pot primo. You might want to take a smell of that guy. Oh, really? Yeah. What's seven pot primo? It is a really hot pepper. Oh, okay. So now we're getting into... We're getting into... We're, we're get, getting into the... You're going to start scaring me now. Let's uh, see. I hope so. I mean... We're going to be good. Mm, that's pretty good. My child described this as old man couch, and I don't know why. Old man couch? She's like, it smells like old man couch. It tastes like old man couch. I'm like, I don't know what old man couches you're I don't licking, know if, I... if any. <laughs> but... It brings my... Anyway. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so... All right, okay. Um, we got some pictures. Mm. Oh, picture. And we have a picture here that we need to have explained. All right, what do you got? Speaking of old man couches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. David, are you responsible for this at all? No, you wouldn't even know, I don't think. I I know what I, I have. Is that you <laughs> yeah. on the left? All right, well, yeah, that's me on the left of my, this would have been 1995. Dude, 1995. Um, when I graduated college. So that's me. I had super, super long hair with my hair shaved on the side. Um, that's my best friend, Dave. Um, he was my college roommate. We, ha we act actually were college roommates by accident. You know, just happened to be our freshman year roommate. And mm -hmm. We've been best friends ever since. Um, <laughs> this picture would be um, right during our graduation week. Um, so we would have graduated. And um, how we say it's been... Uh, how do I phrase this? It was a long day and night <laughs> and day and night. And we were at a friend's house for a party and mm -hmm. um, I was just about done. So I fell asleep and it looks like Dave fell asleep too. And then they decided to... Wait, um, Dave is his name? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, that my, Dave named after that Dave? Um, yeah. So my best friend from high school's name was David and my best friend from high school happened to be named David. So when it came down to hit name that kid, it was a choice because I'm Paul Stephen Gaggi the third. Oh yeah. So I had a little bit of pressure, especially from my mom, to make him Paul Stephen Gaggi the fourth. Mm-hmm. But I kind of felt maybe that had run its <laughs> its place, and so David was the uh, the name that we came up with, and that's yeah. Guys, this is why you're, we are very happy as a generation. We all didn't have camera phones because it was oh, very, yeah. very rare to get a picture like this back then. Cause mm -hmm. That means somebody was actually running around with an actual camera, took the you, pictures. You had to get it. You, you couldn't just take a picture and look at it. You really? had to go to like, Wal no, Walmart didn't even exist. Nope. Uh, you had to go to Kmart. And or some weird place in the middle of a parking lot <laughs> and give them your film and hope that they gave it back to you. Right. And then... Most people would not do that whole process, but that's a good one. I like that one. That's awesome. All right. Cool. <laughs> we learned where David got his name from. Mm, yeah, there we go. All right, this next one is the bomb evolution. Da bomb? Da bomb. Da bomb? Da bomb. Da bomb. It's All like right. we're back in the 90s. We'll get this one nice and chickeny. Come on, sauce. You there can you do go. it. All right. Here, here. Here, here. It doesn't smell great. This one no. smells cool, but hot. This one, this yeah, one's a like, thing. Now that's by far the least tasty. But it's hitting. Yeah. It's hitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. 
We're good. We're good. Okay. Going to the mill. All right. Thank you. I kind of wanted you to do that. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Okay. So, you're going to upset a bunch of people in New York who are totally going to watch this. Okay. But what does New York, what does Utah do better than New York? Oh, what does Utah do better than New York? Um, <clears throat> well, weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's snowing today oh, it's march i it was so funny when i first moved to utah oh my that's really starting to hit now okay mm -hmm. um people would ask me things i'm like ah yeah i met people but i'd end up talking about the weather i love the weather here because we have four seasons clear seasons <clears throat> but where i grew up starting in november through about april you never saw the sun you just didn't see the sun and as somebody with really bad allergies, the humidity in the summertime just killed me. Mm -hmm. And so for me, by far, and, and right now, man, I am loving the snow. It's going to oh, more we're, days. We're going to be skiing until August. I got August. more days skiing and I'm good. Um, other things Utah does better. The roads are a lot wider. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does New York do better than Utah? Um, well, I would say food is better. Although I gotta tell you, um, Utah is not, I mean, New York City, you know, I can't compare it to New York City. But where I grew up, food was better, but still, but Utah's catching up. Um, I wanna say we probably have better drivers in New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never yeah. heard anybody say that New York drivers are better than anyone. <laughs> so Utah, I read, a, I read a paper and they, According to insurance data, Utah has the worst drivers in the nation. No, it just, it's snowing and it's still, have they figured out, like, is snow that you just slow down a you little bit? You just have bit? no fear of death. Or, it's not death, fear of just cracking up your car. <laughs> you just go and you <laughs> slam on the brakes anyway. Um, yeah, so I guess that would be the, the ones that first pop into my mind. That one's really hitting right now. That I gotta one's... You, I gotta tell you. That one's... <laughs> <laughs> That one's good. It gets you. Yeah. It's, it takes a place and it just kind of sits on your tongue. Oh my goodness. All right. Taco vibes only. I put this on a taco. It was vibes. Taking Taco Tuesday to the next level. It's Carolina Reapers and Ghost Peppers combined with lime juice, cumin, and coriander. Well, I'm glad it's got the coriander. It's oh yeah. I mean, what are you going to do without the coriander? That's a glob. I'm probably not going to put that much on. Coriander and... Coriander and okay, here we go. Um, All right, this is gonna get ugly. Got a good one a bit on here. Cheers. Here, here. That piece of chicken didn't want to chicken. So hold on. Do a lot of the the delay that kicks in. Yeah, there it goes. Mm -hmm. There it goes. That's a pretty nice one. This one will. This one will sit in your nose. <sighs> Whew. We're good. 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 You're going back. Like He's going back. back. <clears throat> going back for the extra gas. Just got to challenge yourself a little bit. Mm. All right. All right. Uh, you have no idea how many times this question was asked. Oh. Hardly wait. <laughs> um, so I've divided into about a few things. All right. So let's go back. This happens to you as a teacher. As a teacher, mm -hmm. whether it's here at college, it's here at Da Vinci, it's somewhere else, I have a seed stuck in the back of my throat. <laughs> um, what is your most embarrassing, oh my gosh, I need to rethink my life choices moment as a teacher? Um. <laughs> well, I can think of, um, it was about three or four years ago. Um, as anybody knows when I teach, I'm usually moving around a lot. Even sometimes I'll sit down and I'm always, my hands are always going. That's the Italian in me. Anyway, <laughs> it was about the first week of class and I was on one of those wooden stools, just regular wooden stool. And I'm just talking away. I, I don't even know why I was sitting on the stool, but I also have a tendency to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm talking and all of a sudden I did this and it went too far. So, and I didn't really know the students yet that mm -hmm. well. And I tipped over, boom. I mean, on my back, facing at the ceiling. Everybody is like completely stunned because they think I'm hurt. 
And I just remember thinking, please laugh right now. <laughs> just please laugh at me. <laughs> Cause this was one of the dumber things I've done. Um, I've also, cause everybody knows I drink coffee all the time or always drinking something. One time I was just teaching and for no reason, I just had a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and it, I just, it just fell out of my hand. Like the entire thing just fell out of my hand. Um, and then there's one time, it was actually one of the first times I ever had my own class. I was teaching a, a presidency class at the University at Albany. Um, and they asked me a question about Bill Clinton's impeachment. Oh. And I'll say for this, just let's say that my answer had a certain double entendre in it that I didn't quite um, realize at the time, which created complete laughter amongst this about 65 people that were there and I needed to crawl up <laughs> into, a, into a hole. Go do so. your, uh, your homework <laughs> on Bill Clinton's impeachment kids. All right. How about as a teenager, like early college, yeah. that moment we've all been there. We are teenagers and the worst thing in the world happens. What is yeah. that for you? You know, usually it's something to do with like spilling stuff on myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that sticks in my head. I remember being coffee. In, yeah, coffee. Now I'm just now. Thank you. I'm remembering. Hot sauce. I'm remembering. Oh my god, my white shirt. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in high school, I don't know, ninth or tenth grade, just at the, the cafeteria table, and I had I was drinking orange juice for some reason, and I was just shake the orange juice before I opened it, and then one day, I forgot that I had opened it. And uh -huh. then I shook the orange juice and it was all over me. And, you know, and I went to Catholic school, so it was shirt and tie and it was oh. all over the place. So oftentimes it's stuff like that. I said Catholic school, it's got to be a trip. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was interesting. I, mean, I, went, I went to a very, I went to a public school and that would be very different than Catholic school. So. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it wasn't like super strict, not like the Catholic school you'd think of in the movies, uh -huh. but it was still... You know, it was still a Catholic school. Mr. Froer, for those of you who remember Mr. Yeah. Froer, he went to Catholic school and he told me once a story of him stealing test answers. And wow. I know you wouldn't think from Mr. Froer, but he you apparently got that. in a lot of trouble. All right. All right. Last one. Last one. Last pa dab Apollo made with the Apollo pepper. So what's the Apollo pepper? The Apollo pepper is supposed to be the world's hottest pepper. Now that's so Carolina Reaper holds the uh, current world record for the world's, world's hottest pepper um, officially. The right. same guy who developed the Carolina Reaper, a guy by the name of Ed Pucker Butt Curry, um, developed this thing. And it's supposed to be hotter. I don't know if that's true. It doesn't taste like a Reaper. I think Reapers are gross tasting. But this is the Apollo. The last stab, we are at the last wing of the wing of death. I have been impressed with your ability so far. Well, I've enjoyed you have held your own. Much. There cheers, you go. Cheers. cheers. I put a lot on there. This is the first one that tastes hot. I don't want to taste like anything to separate. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. Mm. All right. All right. That's, How are you feeling? We're feeling all right. You're feeling good? I can still talk. Okay, good. Good, good. This question was asked by somehow more than two people. Oh, interesting. All right. You have two children in this school. I do. You've got lovely David over there. You've got Elizabeth. Which one's your favorite? I knew somebody was going to ask this question. Of course I can't say the answer to that one. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really. You, you Who's your favorite kid? I can't have a favorite kid. Although, I will say that Elizabeth is more like me, mm -hmm. and David is more like his mother. Deal with that information. Do I uh, like myself will. more than my mother? The more than my wife? I don't know. David, what do you think? <laughs> Who does it like you? Who does it like more? I kind of, I kind of hope for more of an answer, but I mean, it works. <laughs> That is the answer I would expect from a person who would rather go, it would go into politics. Yeah, absolutely. Very. Who this is getting hot. All right. Much an answer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. All right. What about the dog? Oh, the dog? No, he's in last place. <laughs> His name is Jackpot. 
I usually call him jackass. <laughs> pretty much what he is. Um, yeah, so what do you think? We got to rate the stuff in our house. You got okay. So my wife has to win that one. Okay. And then David and Elizabeth, I guess, depends on the day. Um, Grades are next week. Then, uh, then what? You got Elizabeth Birds, maybe slightly beat out David's um, guinea pig, only because I have to clean up the guinea pig. So he's gonna. Re- no, but no, I love my dog. My dog's great. He's just a pain in the butt sometimes. All right. I see you outside every so often. And this is maybe my, this is kind of the last question. I see you out there every so often in the basketball shorts, walking the dog, right. and you got the three piece suit, 12 years running, best dress t shirt thing going on. And I have to ask you, what is the best way to slum it up? The best way to slum it up? <laughs> I don't know if I'm the right one to ask that. No, for me, man, it's just like, yeah, nice, comfortable pair of shorts and your favorite T-shirt, man. To be nice and comfortable. All right. Wear a nice pair of old jeans. Nice, comfortable jeans. But that's usually, yeah, shorts and a T-shirt. That's how we go. Holy cow. That is getting good. Yeah, I got to wow. tell you, you have held your own. I have been <laughs> impressed. All right. You have made it through the gauntlet, through the wings of death. I am totally feeling that. That camera, that camera, that camera. What do you want DaVinci to know? What do I want him to know? Yeah, what, if you can tell him one thing, what do you want him to know? Bro, oh. on the serious side as a teacher, what I'll tell you, it's great to have your opinions. It's great to have your judgment, but curiosity has to come first. Always be curious before you're judgmental. It's a Ted Lasso line that I love. Um, and then I also remember um, you know, I always try to remember is, oh my gosh, these are hot. Um, <laughs> as sure as I am about something, New York pizza, I always know that I could be wrong. And somebody out there smarter than me might have a better opinion than me. And I always try to remember that I might be wrong. And if I had advice for you guys, just be to stay curious, understand why we're here to learn stuff and that's why I do what I do is because I get to learn I get to talk about stuff that I think is interesting and hear your opinions and hear your thoughts man that's to me that's that's what it's all about you know, all right. if I can get you guys curious we can get you curious and I'm a happy happy camper so all right hey Mr. thank Josh, you so much this thank you for joining me thank you, you have rocked call. it thank you Da Vinci give him a round of applause yeah, thank, you. thank you for the questions Whoever sent in that that picture, I 